This week, an intro about me not being able to think of a funny intro. Starting off the news this week, the number of discovered exoplanets is close to passing the 4000 mark, which has been dubbed a sign of the explosion of discoveries within the last 25 years. It has helped astronomers understand so much more about what's beyond our own planet, and just how common other planets are, something they could not be sure about until after these discoveries. I know it's not really news as such, but hey, interesting nonetheless. To start off this week's particularly exciting paleontology news, the description of the Tyrannosaurus specimen known as Scotty has just been published, and it reveals that this individual was an incredibly big creature. The previous record for the heaviest T-Rex was held by Sue, the specimen of the Chicago Field Museum, but this new study has calculated a mass for Scotty that exceeds Sue's at around 9.8 tons, or 8,870 kilograms. Although the methods of the researchers have been questioned, and the authors themselves say that the technique they use to estimate the size does not always work perfectly, as demonstrated by their estimation of Spinosaurus mass. But anyway, Scotty has actually been known since the early 90s, yet it's taken this long for the specimen to be properly studied. The paper has also revealed that the animal is the oldest known individual T-Rex, possibly in its early 30s at the time it died, and that it displays a number of pathologies indicating a violent life, such as a broken rib that healed, an infection between the teeth, and broken tailbones thought to have been due to another Tyrannosaur's bite. The paleontologists who describe this Canadian T-Rex also suggest that it supports the idea that all dinosaurs have undergone a sampling bias, meaning many members of this group could actually have grown to far larger sizes than we currently realise. Next up, a fantastic discovery has been made in South China, as a new Lagos data was reported on this week, dated to around 518 million years ago during the Cambrian period. This site is said to rival even the Burgess Shale in its significance, with some incredible soft tissue preservation, and over 20,000 specimens have been collected so far, but just 4,351 of them have currently been analysed. Of these, more than half are new to science, and the site will be very important in figuring out how life radiated out and diversified at this particular point in time. And finally, Mission Jurassic was announced this week. This is a huge collaborative project between the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, the Naturalis Biodiversity Centre in the Netherlands, and the London's Natural History Museum, and it aims to explore a region of the Wyoming Badlands that has not been studied very much, accessing the more northern part of the Morrison Formation. Involving over a hundred scientists, the project hopes to find new species of dinosaurs, as well as uncover much more new material of already known ones. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.